Hello, everybody. My name's Lara. I'm an occupational therapist in Ontario and a partner at AMP Healthcare Education. I am so excited to be here with Kim Barthel. Kim is an occupational therapist based out of British Columbia, but you're also registered in Ontario and the United States. Is that right, Kim? Mm, that is true. <laughs> And Kim so predominantly spends her time now traveling the world, teaching and speaking on topics such as trauma, neurobiology, and how we as clinicians can do our work so much better when we become behavioral detectives in the face of complexity. Um, and Kim also continues to practice as an OT. She is someone who I have looked up to throughout my career as an occupational therapist and have gotten so much just out of following her work and, and better understanding how trauma shows up in the work that I do as an OT. We are so excited at AMP to have the opportunity to host Kim for a three-day course in Ontario this May called Psychosensory Intervention, Informed and Integrated Mental Health Support Strategies for the Treatment of Trauma. And I'm grateful to you, Kim, to have a chat with me today about what this course is all about and what participants are going to be able to get from it. Mm -hmm. So thank you for having this chat with me. <laughs> Uh, Lara, thank you for both the invitation to come to Guelph and also the chance to talk about this meaningful work that we both do. Thank you, Kim. I wonder if, if we could launch right in and if you could tell us a little bit more about what this course is all about and who would benefit from taking it. Sure. Psychosensory intervention is a name that I gave to a process that evolved across 40 years, really, of practice. And what you will learn in this course is an integration of holism, of the mind and the body, and how to blend all of the things that we know as occupational therapists from our approaches in mental health a deeper understanding of neurobiology of trauma, attachment, attunement, as well as how trauma lives in the sensory systems and how we might use sensory processing to create greater degrees of safety in the body and the movement system, how trauma impacts muscles, uh, how it shows up in our posture, in the way we hold ourselves, and move through the world. And it pulls all those pieces together and is applicable from the new natal intensive care unit until the elder care center. So this is a lifespan approach that really is a mind-body connector of sensation, cognition, emotion, and movement. It's beautiful. I am so beyond excited excited to to I love the idea of it being a bridge right a bridge that connects all of these systems um and that brings up one question that we've we've been receiving from some clinicians around around this course and um it's around disciplines and healthcare providers and who this course is really meant for. Um, we've had a few questions trickle in from um, clinicians who don't necessarily see themselves as mental health providers uh, and struggle with whether these approaches, these skills actually fall within their scope of practice. And I wonder what you would say to them. Each of us from our own particular discipline brings our own scope of practice. And this frame of reference informs you. So let's say, hypothetically, you are a clinical counselor or a psychotherapist, a psychologist, and your, you know, your, your traditional way of working with people is through conversation, through dialogue, uh, and through your frames of reference that are, that are a psychotherapeutic in nature. The body is still there. And trauma lives in the body. And so 
it might be as simple as learning to track what you see in the person's body, in their eyes, in their nonverbal communication that might inform you uh, as a clinician to have greater insight into what might be going on for that person behind what they say. Let's say you're a physical therapist and you work in the field of pain. I'm picking that one out of the air. And mm -hmm. pain in and of itself is trauma. And often interfaced because trauma lives in the body, it also accumulates in the body. And it is so common for physical therapists, physiotherapists in Canada, to bang into places where they hit a person's history of trauma. And when you are vulnerable uh, in your pain of suffering, it is so common for a physiotherapist to hear stories of a person's history and not know what the heck to do with those stories, how to care for themselves, how to respond in a way that meets the client where they're at and still feel safe within their scope of practice. Mm -hmm. I think about those who work in pelvic health and how profound that would be in its relationship to the storage of potential of trauma. Let's say you're a social worker and you're working uh, in a context, this is one that's very familiar to me, with people who are homeless or street entrenched and they are overwhelmed by the sensations uh, and the experiences that they're having in their environment and how you might think about that in the context in which you're in. Let's say you're a pediatrician. Let's pick that one. We had one in Hong Kong ask us this question. I have a kid that comes in and I have four minutes to do an assessment. How do I create regulation? Well, this course talks about what can you do in the environment? What can you do with co-regulation to create a sense of safety? Let's say you work in a care home and you're a nursing assistant and you have a patient that has dementia that is so dysregulated by the energy of the people around them. This would also give you a way to look at how are they positioned in their chair so that they are able to breathe and regulate. What is the environment like? And how can you relate in a way that is soothing and regulatory? So I think no matter what scenario you find yourself in, the principles of psychosensory intervention can feed into what it is that you do. It's beautiful. Thank you, Kim. I even miss teachers. They're in there too. Yeah. And this would apply to them in the classroom. It's yet yeah. another example. Yeah, trauma does really kind of percolate into all aspects of working with humans, whether it's a teacher, whether it's it's healthcare. So I really appreciate that this is really an approach that can be used by anyone um, when we understand it more effectively. So I I would really love to hear a little bit more about how and why you developed this course in particular. Sure. My history is kind of the pathway of how it unfolded in that way back in my history, uh, my love was in the field of sensory integration and I'm also a neurodevelopmental treatment instructor. Mm -hmm. So those two parallel train tracks of understanding sensory processing and movement and posture. And I found myself with clients with significant developmental trauma. And in the 80s and 90s, the only glasses that I had to put on at the time were the sensory and motor lenses. And these wee ones, who at that time, we didn't even have the word developmental trauma, were showing up in, our clinical in my clinical practice. And things would evolve in the sensory context that had me land in trauma stories. Mm -hmm. And by divine grace, I suppose, many times those sensory modalities 
were the resolution of the trauma scenarios in my in my context in the moment my love of personal growth work of attunement and attachment 15 years of studying attachment theory uh, and assessing attachment in dyadic in dyad in dyadic context between parents and kids uh, help me deeply understand how that shows up in the sensory systems and how that shows up in the movement systems in relationships mm -hmm. and so these layers scaffolded on top of each other and the kids that I began treating and the adults that I began treating became more and more and more complex sometimes neurodiverse sometimes not with some pretty profound suffering in their histories and together this holistic approach gave me multiple roads in of seeing things through a lens that allowed me different points of entry into a person's place of safety and that's why it became a thing that thank you for sharing that kim um i the approach is is just such a unique one and I think one that's so needed. Um, I understand you're also writing a chapter for a book that's coming out. And can you tell us a little bit more about that on the topic of psychosensory intervention? Sure. That's a humbling question. Um, there is a textbook by the Trauma and Dissociation uh, Association of uh, North America that is writing a compendium of all the different theories, approaches uh, that support children in the field of trauma and dissociation. And they asked me to write a chapter specifically on this theory of psychosensory intervention uh, as the only occupational therapy contributor to the textbook. Um, and it is in the uh, final editorial stage uh, of the entire textbook. So. Uh, due to be published very soon. I can't wait to get a copy. I will be jumping on the list to get a copy. Um, I, one other question that, that's coming up, because this does seem like such a, a unique and much needed approach for healthcare providers. Um, you've created this three-day course, um, and it's a big time commitment for folks. It's a big investment. So I wonder if you could speak a little bit to why three days to process and integrate this information. One of the central principles of psychosensory intervention is becoming your best self. That how we show up, which is a big part of the commitment here, as the instrument the core instrument of co-regulation uh, requires an experiential learning. So yes, there is lecture and didactic uh, material, but the majority of the learning is experiential, where we get on the floor, I hope that doesn't deter anybody, where we actually have the experience of feeling sensory in the body. And if I were to compare it to something like somatic experiencing, which is, you know, a lengthy process of certification. This is a small hit uh, to get people started in the feel of the embodiment of how I use sensation, how I use the body uh, in the context of a story or a history of trauma. And so we do it together in a group. I love that. And I can't wait. And I can just imagine how practical that will make the learning to be able to actually take some of these things away and, and get started with using them right away. So that's really exciting. Can Speaking of that, I'm wondering, Kim, if you can tell us a little bit more about those specifics. What are those concrete things that clinicians will be able to take away from this course and use in their practice? Well, one of the, uh, there's so many practical things, but I think, uh, first of all, 
one of the central uh, things that are offered in the learning is observation. Mm. What is it I'm seeing? Was it a, what is it that I'm seeing in this child or adult's body, in their behavior, as they engage in whatever they're doing, or as they are speaking in conversation? So a large part of the deepening of a skill set is knowing what you're know, knowing what you're seeing. And then what do I do? Well, it might be simple, like changing the alignment of how the person positions themselves. For example, people who experience dissociation as a coping strategy of self-protection often collapse in their body, in their posture. Mm -hmm. And it may be something like having them sit in a position where their spine is more aligned, that brings more arousal into the sympathetic activation that is contained in safety, so that the person has more mobility, more energy to mobilize. Same with depression. Alternately, uh, many individuals who experience trauma struggle with sound, struggle with movement, the sensation of movement, struggle with too much information from their visual systems, mm -hmm. struggle with body awareness and embodiment, just feeling comfortable interoceptively in their body. And so we will do things like use Lycra, which is a sheet of stretchy material uh, that can be used in a wide variety of ways. Uh, in a wide variety of contexts, perhaps to give you a boundary to your body mm. so you know where you begin and end. And it's knowing when to do what. So this is why you can see it takes three days. Right. You know, there's this combination of theory, assessment, experiential treatment, and then contextual applications. That clinical reasoning component, how do I put this all together and really... Um build that capacity to select those. Okay. Oh, thank you so much, Kim. Is there anything I haven't asked you about this course that you're really wanting to mention? I just think when I talk about psychosensory, that this is probably, for me, a culmination of my life's work. And so my greatest joy uh, of all the different pieces and threads uh, of things that I've learned over my time as an, as an OT. I'm so excited to meet you in person and to be able to experience this. Um, and I'll, I'll put out the details for folks. We are having hosting Kim, having her teach this course uh, May 14th. 15th and 16th in Guelph. Um, so please do sign up and join us and um, benefit from Kim's life's work, her experience. And we, I, I do want to throw out there that um, our early bird pricing ends shortly on April, April 5th. So if you want to save some money and join us for this course, make sure you get signed up soon. And the people can find us for registration either uh, at kimbarthel.ca or or amphealthcareeducation.ca. Great. Looking forward to seeing you there. Me as well, Kim. Thanks so much for this.